Hey guys, it's me, Halloween Dan. And today's video is a little bit different from the videos I've been doing recently, but similar in some other ways, because I am talking about props and animatronics like I like to do. But today I'm not talking about new props or new animatronics, even though there is loads to talk about. Sam's Club looks a little bit interesting all of a sudden. Some of you may know what I mean by that. But today I thought instead I'd do a video where I talked not about new props as such, but props, a kind of prop, a genre of prop that I've always been incredibly drawn to. They're my favourite kind of genre of prop and animatronic that there is out there on the market. And there's a lot of them to choose from. And that, of course, is witches. <laughs> so let's just do this. Witch props are, I think they're a bit divisive in some respects. There's a lot of them out there on the market. Literally every kind of firm you can think of has at least one in their repertoire, if not hundreds. And you can buy them, you know, cheap, expensive, big, little, all kinds of shapes and forms, creepy, family friendly. There is every kind of witch you can envisage out there in the market. And I think for that reason, some people feel as though they've been a little bit overdone over the years, maybe put the brakes on the witches. We've got some good ones, why do we need more? You know, they're a little bit cliche maybe, they're a little bit meh. But for me, witches and Halloween go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. And I just, when I think about Halloween, a witch on a broomstick crossing the face of the moon, that is Halloween to me. That's the most Halloween-y image I can think of. So I couldn't imagine having a haunt or doing Halloween and not having some kind of witch prop involved in it. And so for that reason, I thought today I'd talk less about new props and more about witch props in specifically, as they are my favorite kind of prop. And there is so much variety. But the variety is so massive that it's hard sometimes to kind of narrow down as to which one would be the one you would buy. So that's what this is. This is my top 10 witches. That's what I thought I'd go in with. Top 10, these are my top 10 favorite witches that I've seen so far. It doesn't mean that something else won't come out in the future that will turn my head. It just means right now where I sit, these are my favorites. So let's do this. So coming in at number 10, is a somewhat controversial entry, I'm pretty sure, because some of you will be thinking, what, why have you included this? And that is the Whimsical Witch. Now, the Whimsical Witch is a family-friendly witch. I probably would never buy this witch. She certainly isn't on my radar to buy anytime soon. But, as a witch prop for someone who's maybe got a slightly more family-friendly haunt, or young children, or young children in the neighborhood that they don't want to absolutely petrify, this witch is a pretty cool witch. She's got a great outfit, she's got a great look, she's very witchy, she's friendly, but she's cool, she's got that wand. Generally, she's a well put together witch, but she's at the bottom of the stack because, good as she might be, she certainly isn't one I'm gonna be running to the shops to buy anytime soon. In at number nine are the Costco witches, dual witches, two witches, I've chosen. There's a lot of these kind of witches around. You see them where there's two or sometimes three gathered around a cauldron. Costco have brought out different versions of these witches in the past, but these two were out, I'm pretty sure they were out last year, and I really, really liked them. They are pretty cool. They're two quite large witches. I think one's five foot, one's six foot. They're stirring a cauldron. They're saying very witchy things. The outfits are pretty cool. One of them's got like bones hanging down from her dress. They look more on the scary end of the witch scale and I really, really like the look of them. The only reason I put them so low down on my list is because we've all seen these kinds of witches before. There is loads of these. Grandin Rhodes done them. Everybody you can think of has done some version of either two witches or three witches stirring a cauldron. And I like them, I think they're cool, but usually one of the witches or sometimes two of the witches are quite small and yeah, and the quality isn't always there. 
With these two, the quality looks, does look quite good. I like the size of the cauldron. I like it's got this flicker flame effect at the bottom and stuff. And of all the kinds of jewel witches there are, these are my favorite, but I still don't think I'm particularly drawn to buy these. So that's why they're in at number nine. Number eight is another witch that was only brought out last year to the UK. And it's a good one. I have to say it's really cool. And that is the Costco 10 foot witch. Now, just being 10 foot makes this prop an awesome prop. It's one of the main reasons that I lent towards going with the Costco 10 foot Reaper. The size of this guy is enormous and she is too. Absolutely massive. And anyone who's been with me on this channel for any length of time knows I like big animatronic props. She's got a really cool witchy look. She's got LCD eyes. She's holding a wand. The hair's kind of cool. She's clearly a big giant witch. I love the quite very dark green face on this witch as well. And the accent she speaks in is more like a Southern American accent. It's kind of different from most of the witch accents you hear. So she's kind of cool on that level alone. But the reason she's so far down on my list is, as cool as being 10 foot is, I'm not sure it works with a witch. And this has got to be controversial for another reason later on in this video, but 10 foot witch, she's just enormous. And for that reason, in my head, she doesn't seem particularly realistic. The fact that she is so enormous. Yes, she's impactful. Yes, she's really cool. But she just kind of looks a little bit out of place for me. I don't think she needs to be 10 foot. And because she's 10 foot and because she's made also to be outside a bit like the Reaper was, the outfit's very plain. It's very okay. It's a bit of purple mixed in with a bit of black. But that, and it's just a bit boring to be quite honest with you as witch props go and i think really for for a 10 foot prop witches maybe don't mesh with that size of prop at least not on this massive scale so yeah for that reason she's in at number eight coming in at number seven is the grand in road spell casting witch now this witch was out a long time ago she's been around in one shape or form for many, many years. And if you've managed to have her and keep hold of her for that length of time, I think she's been around for at least nine years, maybe eight. Well done you. She's one of them witches that I've always really admired. I like the overall look. I like the book, the spell book. I like the creepy phrases. There's something about the eyes. They're very wide and open and kind of creepy looking. She's got a slightly more creepy vibe. There are other spell casting witches out there. Home Depot brought one out only a couple of years ago. But there's something about this particular one that speaks to me. I don't know what it is. I really just like the look of her. She's got like this like a light up feature in the book that kind of flashes on her face while she's talking. And even though she's not got much more movement, whereas some actually have an extra bit of movement in their arm that's free of the book, I still really like this witch over all the others that are of a spell casting nature. So yeah, she's a firm in at seven. In at number six, is the lunging witch. Now there are two versions of this too. There is both a version where she's just got light up eyes and then there's a later edition that's got the LCD eyes. And this is where I, use, I break my own mold, where I actually prefer the version without LCD eyes. Normally I love a, any prop which has LCD eyes, but on this particular prop, I think the non LCD eyes make her a little bit more scary as she saw sort of, so as she, her name suggests she's a lunging witch she says a few creepy phrases she's like don't get too close and then she leaps forward and she's trying to only a little movement but just enough that if you didn't know that's what she did she would make you jump a little bit and i really like that i love these sort of scare props the ones that kind of lunge forward a little bit and she is definitely a good one her outfit's really creepy too so she's a great lunging witch in at number five is a witch that I think was only out last year, and that is the Techie Six Foot Witch. Now, at the time, I ranked her pretty lowly, if I'm honest with you. She is quite a plain looking witch. Her outfit is just black, and she's just kind of stood very statically, not doing an awful lot, speaking some creepy witch lines. But actually, as time has gone on, I've come to appreciate her more and more. I love the face mold on this witch. I love the really green skin that she's got. I like the white eyes. It makes her look really creepy, this white glowing look in the eyes. The pumpkin she's holding is an awesome thing in its own right with the flicker flame effect going on inside it. 
really, really creepy and cool. And even though she is quite plain and she's not doing an awful lot, there's something about that that actually adds to her creepiness. The fact that she is so static and just sort of saying these very creepy lines, holding a pumpkin. And I think that's what, as time has gone on, I've come to appreciate about this witch more and more. So yeah, she's definitely a good one for me in at number five. In at number four is a witch I've spoken about before, which is the Soothsayer Witch. She's always up towards the top end of my witch sort of area, the ones that I like the most. Again, there's not a lot between her and the, the likes of a techie ghost. She's got a really cool, creepy outfit. She's clearly got her little crystal ball thing that she's sort of talking about the future and all that kind of stuff. I, on this particular occasion, prefer the version with the digit eyes. I really do like her with the digit eyes. I think it kind of gives her a bit more character. Generally, just a really cool witch. In at number three is a witch from last year that I really, really rate. She's one of my favourites. And this is where you're going to go, hang on a minute, you just said you didn't like this. Because the witch I'm talking about is the Home Depot 12-foot witch from last year. Now, before you get on your high horses and say, you just said you don't like witches in that sort of size don't make an awful lot of sense, and I stand by that. But what sets this witch apart, the reason anyone who's got her knows, is although she is 12-foot, most of that height is in the broomstick. What makes this witch particularly special, what I think really sets her apart, is that she's hanging onto this giant broomstick. She's 12 foot up in the air. And then she's quite a large witch in her own right. But most of that 12 foot is the broomstick. And she's kind of hanging off the broomstick in this kind of really bizarre pose as if she's getting half blown away in a big gust of wind. The animation on this witch is great. I love the digit eyes. I love the movement of the jaw. I love other little subtle things that Home Depot put into this, like the light up feature in the arm so her face is lit when she's talking. Just generally, the costume looks really good on this witch. The way she looks is really cool. She's a real classic, creepy witch. And the fact that she's so high up in the air, 12 foot up in the air, on this enormous broomstick, I think really does set her apart. And she's really, really cool. In at number two is my only witch that isn't an animatronic. Because this witch, when I saw it, absolutely blew me away. And that is the Distortions Unlimited pumpkin witch. This witch was only released earlier on this year and I have to say she is one creepy witch. I've just the look of her is unbelievable. This is the creepiest witch I think I've ever seen with this kind of bizarre pumpkin head and it's she's she's really warty and gross and and just wrinkled up and weird she's holding a little lantern that glows and flicker flame effect which is like a little miniature kind of squashed pumpkin in its own right she's got this really warty green skin that starts to sort of fade into orange as she's got this pumpkin head look she's really weird and really creepy and really gross but gross in a beautiful way, if that makes sense. I really, really like this witch and would definitely, definitely have her in my home without a doubt. I would, if I could get her easily, I'd be like, yes, give me that creepy witch, please. Yes. But she's beaten to number one by one witch. And I think this is a witch that not everyone agrees with. Some people think she could have been better than she actually is. But for me, I really, really love this witch. And that is the Servo Crone Witch from Morris Costumes. Now she was released last year too. And her name, everything about her is in the name. She's a crone, so she's kind of gross looking. She's a creepy looking witch. The outfit is kind of off and brown and sort of just dirty looking. She looks like she's been sat in a ditch somewhere for about a hundred years. She's got bones around her neck. She's got these those creepy white eyes too. She's saying very creepy, weird things too. She's kind of trying to sort of ensnare children, which is odd. I know a lot of the witches say things a bit like that, but she seems to do it in a rather menacing way. And then, as well as all the cool other factors about her costume and what she's saying, she's also got this extra level of movement with the servo motors. Now, some have said that she could have had more movement, that the servo motors, she could have been doing a little bit more and maybe they didn't put them to the best use that they, that they could have done. But personally, I really like the movement she has. It's, it's 
Not the most fluid movement, but it is kind of cool. And just that extra bit of movement, I think, makes her an even creepier witch. So she gets right to the top, my number one witch, that I would definitely, definitely buy if I was in the market for a witch. Which I'm never going to say I'm not, because I love witches. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today. This is a slightly longer video than normal. I just really wanted to go through these witches and tell you all about my favourites and my least favourites. And I hope that maybe some of your favourite witches were on that list today. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with anything I've said or if I've forgotten anything that actually would have been a really cool addition to this list. I'm always happy to have a look at a witch. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Keep it spooky. Bye. Thank you.